Watch live streams. Cool. Huh? Oh, it's live streams? <laughs> <laughs> Twitching it out there. How's it going, guys? Good. Oh, yeah, Good. I'm Twitch. Oh, welcome to the first day. <laughs> Thank y'all for coming to the panel. You don't sound like it's only the first day. I, I sound I'm, like it's the last day. You're done. You want to go home? Uh, this is my, uh, 20th convention this year. Wow. So, wow. and I just did a con in Canada last weekend. And then the moment that I got back, I had to fly to Houston to record for a day. Then I got stuck in Houston. And then I had to come back, go up to Dallas and record for a day. Pat came down here last night. And stuff. So, so it's just like, I'm still, I'm still recovering from the last convention. So it's just, do it. Was it cold in Canada? No. Canada was actually. Uh, a little war. Um, yeah, it was about like actual. Well, the, the first couple of days that I was there, they had a cold front come in. They were like, "This is weird. It never snows in September." And it was snowing up there, but then by the time I left, it was up to eight degrees. So, like, yeah. so like, yeah, I brought Texas with me. Uh, always do. And it's so funny every time I go up there because I have to try to do the conversion in my head when talking to people because we inevitably talk about the weather every time I go up there and I have to do the conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius in my head. So I'd be like, yeah, it was 105 when I left. And they're like, what is that? And they're just like, oh, God, right, Celsius. Uh, 45 degrees. And they all go... <laughs> Blows their minds. But yeah, no, uh... I am good, just a little tired. Are you liking it here? I have never, ever once been to Corpus. I've lived in Texas my entire life, born and raised, 32 years old, and now that I found out that Whataburger started here, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to get the original Whataburger. Is the actual original building still here? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Up, but it's there. Oh. It's the Whataburger, but it's not like, yeah, yeah, Whataburger by the Bay down here. Okay, what? Water, uh, Whataburger by the Bay, it's got a uh, second deck where you can- That was the first Whataburger? No, well, I don't know which one. It's not the first one, but it's the one that we have here. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. There's one like that in Galveston, too, that has the second, the little deck level or whatever. The but first, be careful. I've never been to that one again. I'm sure. Seagulls are jerks. See, they, they are. are. Yeah. Whataburger's yeah. actually a little shack that's no longer running. Yeah. It's yeah. in a parking lot of a Whataburger that's already built. So, gotcha. Yeah, so gotcha. the Whataburger's really cool. It's still there, the little stand. Okay. Cool. Well. Hello, my name is Josh Greeley. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with any of my work, uh, I've been working as a voice actor professionally for almost 15 years now. Sorry, coming in January, we'll be 15. Um, most of that work has been in anime. Uh, a lot of it has reached out into video games as well. Commer commercials, uh, audiobooks, uh, prelay uh, work and stuff like that, but the vast, vast majority is anime. Uh, I have, I think, as of now, I've been a part of over 250, 300 anime titles, and I have, wow. over, have over 200 characters that I've done in these 15 years, so it's, uh, it's been a very wild, wild ride. Uh, some of the more familiar ones you might know, uh, or recent, um, um, Armin Arlert, and uh, the narrator for Attack on Titan, uh, Yuri Kotsky and Yuri on Ice, yes. uh, yes. Akihisa Yoshi and Baka and Test. Uh, yeah. You're Sadao. Komatsu and Toriko, right? I was Komatsu and Toriko. I was also Sadao Mao and The Devil is a Part-Timer. Oh, yes. uh, yes. I was uh, Kurinosuke and Princess Jellyfish. Woo! Uh, I am the Grand Priest or Grand Minister in Dragon Ball Super. Uh, any Ruby fans? Anybody watch oh. Ruby? Uh, I need I'm, to. I'm Tyrion Kalos, the villain from the Tyrion? yeah from the fourth from the fourth season. Yeah, oh, I was Tyrion. Um, I'm gonna feel for Crow to cut your. I know. Um, <laughs> mm, he'll get his. <laughs> He's here this weekend too. Um, me and Vic are right across from each other, so I'll just be yelling at him as Tyrion all weekend. Uh, I'm coming for you, Crow. Um, and so, um, oh God, so many. Um, but yeah, uh, I've also been, like I said, I've done some work in video games, uh, Tales of Zillia 2, I was Luke Kresnik. Um, the uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, I was Demi Graw. Anybody, if anybody plays Smite, uh, I was the original voice of Shiba and about ten other skins and stuff in the game, uh, Paladins, uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, yeah, very, very, I've been insanely fortunate in these 15 years to, to get the... Uh, a lot of work, and oh, also any My Hero fans, any My Hero Academia fans, 
I play Tokoyami Fumikage as well as, say hello. Hi everybody, Dark Shadow here. Oh, so, <laughs> oh, so, yeah, um, yeah. Just, and oh my god, and that show's just exploded lately, hasn't it? It's amazing. And I love that I basically, like, I love that Tokoyami is just so cool. That he just comes in every couple of episodes and there's something new and amazing that he's done. And we get to see how much stronger he is as a hero. And he's just, he's just, he's one of the coolest characters that I've ever played. And he barely talks at all. And it's, it's, and it's just like, I never thought that I would get to that I would love a character so much that I don't really get to spend a lot of time with. And I do, he's just so badass. Like, once they have the summer, we get to see what his room looks like, the door in his dorm room or whatever at the school. It's just like, I would chill in there and listen to death metal all day. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, and, do you like Agresco? I do what? Agresco? I know Agresco, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, baby metal, and I love those. Yes. Guys. Ghost, Metallica, Slipknot. Yes. Oh. Oh. Rammstein. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would, I would, just, I would just go down the list of my favorite bands with Togo Yami, and I have a feeling he would like a lot of the same ones because he's me. <laughs> <laughs> So this is just a general Q and A. I can just go on and ramble, or I'll embarrass you. But yeah. So ask questions. Yes. We'll start okay, right here. Um, I cosplay as Yuri Kotsky, cool. and Thank I was you. thinking um, of asking you, what is your opinion on Victor and Yuri's relationship and Yuri on Ice? Well, I can't speak for the creator, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I whatever their intention was with the relationship is you know they haven't really said 100% either way what it is but as a fan of the show and someone's worked with it they're totally together. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like and why do you whisper it? They're together. They're absolutely together as far as I'm concerned. Exactly. I mean like just all of the things that we see that all of the allusions to the matching rings. like matching rings, a proposal and, and stuff like that, just the words and the way that they did it. Like it's it to me the it's it's it seems very yeah, the kiss and you know we don't know if they actually kiss, but it's like come on, he either they were kissing or he was biting his face. <laughs> so like it was close enough for either. Um, the but actually did confirm it. She did. All right, yeah. good. Um, well, I mean, it, I mean, I've heard people say that, and when I, I look it up and I ask people at Funimation, and I've never been able to get any it's sort of confirmation as to it was an actual interview. Was an interview. It was okay. Yeah. Please, if you can find that and show it to me before the end, so I can tell people <laughs> like that it was. Find that. It's like I need proof it before was I can. Twenty sixteen. <laughs> okay. But that, yeah, I'll have to see if I can because I've met her and like. From what I understood at that point, they she had not in any way, shape, or form said one way or the other with, with, if they had kissed or if they were together or anything else like that. So to be on the safe side, I just until I have proof, I can't say one way or the other. Actually, the Japanese so. DVD they uh -huh. edited the DVD and it shows them kissing. They do for like the unedited. Yes. Have you seen it? Yes, there was a video. I want to see that. All right, cool. That was on Facebook. <laughs> I want to see it. Okay, Can so show you? um. So, their relationship, even if they aren't together as a couple, like an intimate love, it is still a very loving friendship. And I think that, I mean, in, in the core thing about their relationship, aside from it, if they are lovers, like, it's the most accurate and uh, healthy portrayal that I've ever seen of a gay relationship in any media. And it's really, I hope that we start to see that happen more and more. But even if it isn't a, an intimate relationship, it is a very loving friendship, and, the way, and we see the results of that from the way that they make each other stronger, each of them is a better person when the other one's around, and especially for Yuri, learning what it is to love himself, to love someone else and be loved in return, and, and to love his art, that all comes from his relationship with Victor. From the lessons he learns with Victor and through their relationship. So, uh, to me, it's just, regardless of whether you, you know, they, they are intimate or not, or if it's just a friendship, the fact remains that it is love and that it is a relationship that empowers and makes and betters both of them. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. All right. Cool. And I'll get right back to you. Over here. Yes, you're right in the middle. Yeah. Did you, have you seen the new My Hero movie? And 
No, I'm kind of disappointed you. your character didn't play a bigger role. Yeah, he's just kind of there for that one scene. He's just yeah. like, he's just get, like, walking up. Lines, just like, yeah, 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 something like that. Like, he's, what's the guy who can do all the, that can spread all the arms and stuff? Out I can believe his name all the time. I know, and it's like, he's my, it, my best friend plays him, Ian. Yeah. And I love that we always get to have, like, uh, yeah, Ian Sinclair is so good, um, and, uh, and we're always in scenes together, and I love the fact that really the only time that Tokoyami is on screen in that movie, it's him and Ian's character just kind of yeah, walking, walking through the streets, like, all right, we're going to do our part. Yes, we are. And that's it. <laughs> it's just, uh, ah, it's, it's awesome. Again, he's just a cool bird. Yeah. I was kind of mad that he didn't uh, get to show something in the movie. Now. Yeah, me too. Hopefully we get to see, you know, I'm sure there's going to be other movies. Yeah. The movie was epic, though. Yeah. I still haven't seen it yet. I'm excited for it. Did y'all just hear? Actually, it broke box offices. That like yes, I read it, about that. It, it, it out, my hero, the movie, it just through the two days that it showed, outsold the new Predator. Oh, the new Predator was trash. Though. Yeah, uh, outs really bad. outsold the new Predator and the Nun in in box offices. It made it made almost two million dollars in the yeah. two days that it was airing across the country. Yeah, that's like so, yay yeah, anime. Yeah, they actually added more shows to certain theaters because it was so big. Can you imagine what you know if that sticks? Just how amazing that can be for us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, if if a mainstream title like The Predator that has been popular and huge since the what 70s, yeah. late 70s, yeah. early 80s, can be outdone by an anime movie now in the states, people are going to start looking at it more. The fact that Sony is already you know has their hands like Sony bought Sony Entertainment bought Funimation last okay. year. Did it? Oh, yeah. Wow. I know about that. Yeah. 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 Sony yeah. Entertainment uh, now owns Funimation. I guess that was um, why Todd kept, kept writing all these tweets about that. Yeah, yeah, there was a huge thing about it last year when, when Sony acquired uh, Funimation. And so that, while that can be scary, and at the time it was scary, and I mean, nothing's really changed since then. Um, the dubs, are, we're still making the dubs as fast as we have been for the last, you know, three or four years. We're still making them as, you know, we're still putting out quality stuff and getting it to you within a week of, of the Japanese coming out, if not sooner. Um, and Sony wanted a part of that. They, Sony started to see that anime has mainstream capability, promise, in the United States. And this was the first time that we've ever seen a big company do that since Pokemon. Well, so, did. like, if this, if my hero outselling Predator and everything, and the fact that Dragon Ball did so well, yeah. did so well yeah. with its movies a few years Probably ago, gonna and Broly's coming up, yeah, like, we're... <laughs> I just, I just really hope that this is the start of the thing that really brings anime into the mainstream view for most of Americans, and it's not just synonymous with Dragon Ball, Pokemon, and Hentai. <laughs> you, know, like, you know what I mean? It's like everybody, like if you're not an anime fan in this country, if someone has heard of anime, at least they've either heard of Dragon Ball, they've mm. definitely heard of Pokemon or Sailor Moon, and they know what hentai is. <laughs> and, that's, and they think that that's all that anime is. It's just Pokemon and hentai. And it's, and it's like, so I would love to see more mainstream focus for this in the States, and hopefully that we don't see like Funimation and Bang Zoom and Sentai you know, get absorbed into much bigger companies, and then like because I, I would love for the fa I would love for all of this because all of these companies are run by both professionals and fans alike that have been doing this for twenty some odd years, and so I, I, I would hope that we'd be able to keep our uh, like all of our actors pool like nobody's gonna like take the work away and just send everything out to L.A. or out to New York or out to you know, whatever that we get to keep everyone where we are, but with a much more mainstream focus and a much more mainstream uh, resources. Like, Sony's money, first and foremost, could very easily help uh, push anime in, into more of a, a limelight in, in the States. And so I'm hoping that that's what we lead to. So go out there and watch the movies in theaters. Support me. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, any, someone back there? Yes, in the right back. Do you like my head? I do like my head. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down a little bit more. Is that the, is it, okay, yeah, I do. Very much. Good question. Yes, right here. Okay. You being from Texas, Houston, right? Uh, born in, uh, I lived in Houston for a few years. I, uh, I uh, lived just, I grew up just outside Waco. Okay. Do you know another voice actor, Troy Baker? I do know Troy. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, one of my first gigs uh, with Funimation in the early years that I was starting there, uh, Soul Leader. Um, I was Oxford. And oh, so, uh, yeah, with the, yes, do you challenge the royal thunder? 
Um, yeah, with you? Uh, yeah, 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 and so I had this episode with Troy who played Excalibur. Oh, and, 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 and so that's why Excalibur <laughs> from the United Kingdom. Um, but uh, so I, he had already recorded that entire episode, and so I just got to play off of him for this entire this entire thing. And not long after that is when he moved out to LA, and he became the super huge yeah. video game megastar that he is today. Um, but yeah, no, he uh, he started out with Funimation. Uh, so did Laura Bailey. Uh, um, so did uh, Travis Willingham, so did uh, Vic Mignogna. Well, Vic started with ADV, like I did, and then, you know, he's, you know, like, they, like, so many of, especially now, and, you know, with Laura Bailey, Travis Willingham, and, and those guys, they are now also very well known for Critical Role, for all of the Dungeons and Dragons stuff. They're, like, their household names with that stuff, and they started at Funimation. They all got their start in Funimation. Yeah, and they're from Texas too. All, yeah. Everyone started here in the good old Lone Star State. Yep. Yes, sir. Do you uh, ever pull inspiration for voices? Because actually, oh yeah. When we heard your My Hero voice, we actually immediately thought of Yami Yugi. Yami Yugi, nice. <laughs> um, no, actually, I was doing my Tatum impression. J. Michael Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for Toko Well, because uh, when we auditioned for My Hero, we only had, just because there's so many characters, they only auditioned everyone for four characters. There's only four characters on the sides. There was uh, um, Deku, obviously, Bakugo, Ida, and uh, what's her name that floats? Machaka. Machaka, thank you, Machaka. Um, those were the four characters that they auditioned everyone for, and then they cast us based off of what we did in those auditions. So I read for Deku, Bakugo, and Ida, and in Ida, I was just like, this is a Tatum role. Like, this is, and J. Michael Tatum ended up playing Ida, so I was just like, I know what I'm talking about. And so, I was just like, this is a Tatum role, I'll do my Tatum voice, just because I feel like, I, like, I, Deku is much more in my wheelhouse. That's, I play a lot more, I've, I've played so many characters like Deku over the years, like Armin and Akihisa and Kenichi and stuff like that, so it's just like, uh, that was kind of the easy go-to for me. Bakugo, so then my other two choices, I wanted to make sure I was just at least showing off my range while I was auditioning, so Bakugo is more of the tough but still kind of high energy, Ida is the in the lower range, stuff like that, so I did my low range, my kind of. Tatum impersonation, and Colleen had never heard that voice out of me. Colleen Klinkenbeard, who directs the dub, had never heard that type of voice out of me in like the 12 years that she's known me. And she was like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. And so then I end up being cast, and I didn't know who I was cast as, and I come in, and I just see this bird head, and I was just like, I need to be Edgar Allan Poe's hero. Like, yes, 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 Junior Birdman. <laughs> and so it was just like, yeah, I was, I was stoked. And then I found out that not only do I get to play a gothic bird, but I'm also his shadow. And I get to talk to myself. <laughs> like, as I have conversations with myself while I record. And it's just, yeah, it's, it was, it's a blast. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, yes. Wait, you have not asked a question. Yes, yes. And, I, and then you. So, I hate to do this to you. Okay. But I heard someone mention earlier. Okay. Can you do the arm That's all I was gonna ask. No, I can't. Oh. I'm so sorry. It's the first day, and that, okay. and that, yeah, I have, to, I, have to talk, I have to talk to a lot of people over the weekend, and that voice, that voice really does, like, the scream tears me up. Oof. Oh, okay. It's really um, The last day. Yeah, yeah, last right. Day. Last day, maybe. Last day. We'll see, but no, I can't, because of the day after that, I have to fly to Houston. <laughs> I, was, uh, so I was just announced actually for there was a show. It's several years old. Uh, did anybody ever watch in the subtitles? Uh, Tata never falls in love. Oh, yeah. you did? Yes. You saw that? All right, cool. Yeah, yes. we're we're dubbing that for Sentai. I'm I'm Tata. Oh, okay. We uh, they just announced that this morning, so oh, I, can, I can finally okay. talk about it. Um, <laughs> very cute, very fun show. Sarah Wheatenheft is playing uh, Teresa. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're. It's gonna be fun. If you if you never heard Sarah Wheaton have before, does anybody watch Dragon Ball Super? The dub for it right now? She's Zeno. Oh. She's the little god. She's the god of the Dragon Ball universe, and I'm her right hand man. I'm the grand I'm the angel that's always watching over Zeno. And so it's like, now we're lovers. <laughs> in, this, in this show. Or maybe not, because apparently Tata never falls in love. We'll see. Um 
But no, I cannot do the Norman scream. I will, however, give you uh, the Norman speech because, believe it or not, that's far easier than doing the scream. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one sec. Uh, Armin Arlert. There he is. I am a soldier, and I have dedicated my heart to the restoration of humanity, sir. Nothing could make me prouder than dying for such a noble cause. If we use his titan ability with the manpower we have left, I believe we can do it. We can retake this city for humanity's glory. In what little time I have left to live, I will advocate his strategic value! <laughs> Good old Armin. <laughs> I love him. The divine daffodil. <laughs> the golden coconut. Really? He's my little cinnamon roll. But after this past season, he's become kind of a spicy cinnamon twist. Did you see that? Like, do you see that? Anybody catching up or keeping up with the current season? Yeah. and everything? Like, he's having a rough time. <laughs> Poor boy, it's just he just can't catch a break. And yes, your question. Well, you may not be able to do the arm and stream, but can you at least tell us the story where it came from? Yes, I will tell that. And yeah, this uh, the funny thing about the arm and stream, aside from the fact that I found out that in 2014, can you believe it's been four years since we dubbed this thing? Oh my God. Like 2012, 2013, 2014 when we did the first season. Wow. Um, I know it took. It, it, oh, it was just it was way too long of a break between the first season and the second season of the image, but they only had it. That studio that animates it only had a skeleton crew, so they had to do, and they had like four other shows that they were contracted to do, so it's like, we had to wait. They, they, they couldn't hire any other animators, but still sucks, but it's understandable. Um, the, uh, the, the origin of the Scream, uh, around the same time that uh, we found out that people were downloading it, and it was the, apparently the most downloaded ringtone of 2014. <laughs> <laughs> my stream was just like, people are waking up to be screaming. <laughs> my best story about that is someone actually had it go, they used that as their text message thing, so they would just hear me scream every time they got a text, and they got a text in class. Oh. <laughs> in high school. Oh. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like, I'm, just, I'm just like, oh, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that. To see <laughs> get your phone taken away. And apparently, it happened all the time in this class, and she wasn't the only one of her friends that had it as their ringtone. <laughs> so, apparently, this particular teacher, my voice, she hated me. And I'm like, she's never met me, she doesn't know what it's from, nothing. But she knows the sound of that scream. <laughs> she hates it. <laughs> so, so, like, um... The origin, where it actually come from, like, as we were finding out this, and that news was going all over Tumblr, uh, apparently some friends of mine from high school also visit the magical land that is Tumblr, and posted, like, oh my god, we are freaking dying. We went to school with him, and the last time we heard him scream like this, he was being pushed down a hill in a shopping cart. <laughs> I can't deny it because it's true. <laughs> because when you live in Podunk, Texas, town of 3,000 people, and there's nothing to do in the summer, and we didn't have internet yet, and Toonami wasn't even a thing yet because we didn't have cable, what else are you going to do but film your own jackass stunts? <laughs> so, yeah, I got pushed down a hill in a shopping cart, and I screamed like Armin. And that's where it came from. <laughs> yes. uh, from Devil the Part Timer, what was your favorite line for Sit Down Now? I can't just pick one favorite from Satan, the Lord of Flies. <laughs> um, and can you do that like? Yeah. Let me think of it. Let's see. Um, I think... Is that a Kappa? That was adorable. I think it was a dinosaur. Was it a dinosaur? Yeah, it just kind of leaned in. I just saw it like a turtle head, like a cat <laughs> thing, and then it hit its head and it squeaked. And then it left. I think so. it's that dinosaur that has the bony head. That's awesome. Um, Probably uh, the uh, the very the close to the last episode when the, the big final duel that's happening uh, and he's stripped down basically to his boxers because he didn't want to get his his uniform dirty because he'd have to pay for it if it got if it got destroyed or whatever. It's like that comes out of my paycheck. Uh, so he has that he he's, he's in full devil form and he's he's fighting them off and him. he's like put some clothes on. He's like don't worry. 
These, uh, this underwear is extra durable! And, and he just, he just poses, and it's extra durable, and that was it. I love him with that. Well, I mean, plus, I mean, any, any time he's in manager mode, and he's, like, freaking out about, like, like, why did it have to bring it back the black pepper fryer? Maybe I can use magic, but we know she'll fire me. What if Emmy sees me using magic? And he's just losing his mind, like, I absolutely adore him. What's up, Deadpool? Fun fact. Yeah. Yeah. I had just Respect. started working at McDonald's when I saw that. You started working at McDonald's when you saw that? No. Did you, did you, like, did you pretend to use magic whenever you were making French fries? No, actually, I worked, I, I hated that job, and I worked there for three years after three years ago. Good, uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, my very first job I ever had was flipping burgers for Sonic in my little podunk town. Oh. I lasted yeah. two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lasted two weeks of that job. It was horrible. Like, plantar fasciitis, so my feet hurt, for one, and just standing there on a very slippery floor, having to, like, block my legs so I'm not slipping every time I flip a burger. It was just ridiculous. And then, yeah, I had a... I'm trying to think of a nice word. Uh, a jerk of a manager who uh, played death metal... <laughs> Which I thought was great. I love the fact that we were playing Metallica at our at our Sonic drive through awesome. whenever people come up. But uh, he was he was just he was a jerk. He mistreated a lot of the bellhops and everything. It was just like I don't want to be here. So I I bounced. And, uh, but yeah, that was my very first job ever. Was flipping burgers. <laughs> and then one of my favorite roles ever. I'm flipping burgers. <laughs> yes. Uh, how much of a character do you think is like based on your voice, and how much do you think is based on writing? Good question. Um, equal parts, um, because as a, someone who wrote for eight to ten years for Funimation and ADB and Bang Zoom, uh, so much of a character's voice or just their personality, everything is portrayed through halfway through what is written, and then the second half is how the actor delivers what is written. Uh, so I, I would say that it's equal parts. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. Um, I know it's not really like a question, question, but uh, do you mind answering the next like five questions in your voice from Attack on Titan? Okay. <laughs> 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 Never been requested for that. That's awesome. Yes. This this one's gonna be difficult with uh, what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was wondering, what your Ochako voice sound like? Oh, Ochako voice. I didn't audition for Ochako. I know, but if, if Colleen had been like audition Oh, for sorry. Her. I didn't audition for Ochako. <laughs> okay, but like, what voice would you have used? Nothing that I have available. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ochako! <laughs> I would just sound like a little lamb. <laughs> Bye, Billy! Um, get it wet and it becomes a creature. Uh, <laughs> uh, other question. Someone else have yes. And there was someone in the back that had one. Yeah. We'll get okay. you and then in the back. If you work at uh, AMA that you didn't work on, when I say like in the nineties. Alright. I already got it. If I could work on any anime that was in the nineties and I never had a chance to work on it would be the Slayers. Oh, I Bebop? I liked Bebop. Slayers is my jam. Slayers is still to this day my favorite. Who here has never heard of or seen the Slayers? I've never seen it, but heard of it. You forgot the voice. It's kind of soft. It's too old. You all have homework. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anybody here seen Fairy Tale? <gasps> Slayers was Fairy Tale before Fairy Tale. Oh, okay. Raid Master was Fairy Tale before Fairy Tale. Huh? Raid Master was Fairy Tale. Before. Yeah, Raid Master. No, this was even before wow. Raid Master. Oh my God. Yeah. Long before Raven <laughs> ever even was a concept, there was the Slayers. And the Slayers, not even made by the original, by the same guy who does, it's a completely different thing, but every major fantasy-based anime since the early 90s has taken their cues from the Slayers. Uh, especially Fairy Tail. Uh, if you've never seen it, highly recommend it. It was one of the first, it was one of the mainstream anime that people in the 90s were really excited for, uh, other than like Pokemon or 
uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth or never heard of that. Oh my gosh, my first my first name ever was Narth. You know, what I'm saying is y'all are just like so. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, when were you born? Uh, '93. Was anyone who else here was born in the mid '90s or the early 2000s? '94. '98. '98. All right. All right. My first was uh, Yasha. Okay. Who here was born in the '80s, like me? I'm more disappointed than all of you. So like, Frida never even ever heard of the Slayers or Magic Knight Ringer or anything like that. I love Slayers. Trigun. Trigun, yeah, Trigun was amazing. Where could I watch it? Um, Funimation has the rights currently to all of the old Slayer stuff. Okay. So that's that's somewhere you can get it. Um, other than that, I think the best place to find it would be like eBay. old, like the yeah, like Amazon would probably be a lot easier. A bunch of the eBay. vendors got like the whole DVD, like the whole series set. Maybe I'd be surprised if they did. Uh, oh, I've seen a couple of them over there. Oh, you have? All right, cool. Well, then there you go. It's in the deal truck. Uh, but, um, so yeah, the Slayers, 100%. Uh, and if you can find it, I will say this, the dub, uh, the first 13 episodes of the first season are a little rough because they, uh, they actually end up replacing three of the main characters with other people after the 13th episode, but you might recognize some of the names. The people they end up replacing them with, uh, are, um... Crispin Freeman. Oh, I love him. Was he, didn't he work with Mm-hmm. He was also Alucard. Oh, wow. Oh. From Helsing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, I mean, he's been all sorts of stuff over the years, but I mean, that was kind of his. The entire cast of the Slayers, it was their first big ensemble thing together, four seasons long, and then that entire cast ended up going on to record the first season of Pokemon. Isn't the first, like, the Indigo League, mm -hmm. isn't that on Netflix? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the girl who voiced Ash for the Indigo League mm -hmm. um, is the voice of one of the leads in Slayers. Oh. Um, Amelia will Tesla say them. Um, she's all about justice. And, uh, um, oh my god, yeah, Crispin Freeman voices Cell Goddess. Uh, uh, Eric Stewart, who is the voice of the first Brock for Pokemon, oh, is yes. the voice of Gallery. He's the male lead. And uh, Lisa Ortiz is the lead, uh, Lena Inverse. And she's done all, she's the current director for Pokemon. And has been the director of it for the past, I don't know, like four or five years. And uh, yeah, just look it up. Look up the Slayers. You can find the dub. The first 13 episodes are a little rough until they get those three other actors in. And then once, and you'll hear it, because even Eric, like, it's it's one of Eric Stewart's first roles. It's one of Lisa Ortiz's first roles. And it's a very different, so like, you can kind of hear that they're new to the booth as they're recording. And keep in mind, this was the 90s, so they were having to record stuff on tape. <laughs> Not digital, tape. And if it didn't fit the flaps... They had to rewind it with a oh, hand crank wow. <laughs> and redo it. So, like, it's 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 a very it's an old it's one of the older dubs. But for a '90s dub, working with the technology that they had, it's one of the best. It's like it becomes after those first like 10, 13 episodes when they really hit their stride, and they they kind of they at that point I think the director, the actors, and the writers all kind of knew what it was they were working on then, and they were comfortable. After those, like the first 10, 12 episodes or whatever, the remaining three seasons, three or four seasons, are gold. They're some of the best anime dub work you'll ever hear. Uh, please check it out. And if you only watch sub, check it out in sub too. I don't care. It is still one of the greatest anime I've ever come out of Japan. I prefer dub because I like to hear all your hard work. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Join the scouts. We have cookies. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Dude, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm really, I can't show it. But if I, <laughs> I'm so serious. Uh, I've been, uh, they told me, yeah, second time was coming to Corpus. I said, you know, y'all just keep messing with me. Uh -huh. <laughs> y'all just keep messing with me. They, then they kept telling me, oh, I'm on vacation. I'm on paid vacation. Oh my gosh, dude. Well, yeah, happy vacation. vacation. Hell yeah. <laughs> so my question is, uh, were you the voice actor for season one, two, and three? Yes. 
Oh, wow. Every season of Attack on Titan, I was Armin and the narrator. Oh, cool. Yeah, man. Uh, so, like, I mean, just the opening scenes. Um, and on that day, humanity received a grim reminder. And so, like, I mean, even from when Armin is a very young kid, it's one of the, one of the very first scenes uh, when he's being bullied by those kids. It's like, uh, yeah. the reason you bully me is because your brain's the size of a walnut! <laughs> this is, uh, so pummel me all you want! I've already won! And then, you know, he has the time skip after that, like, uh, after three episodes, and so he goes from little bitty kid Armin to, yeah, Aaron, yeah, we can totally do that. And then, and so that's just kind of where he stays for the rest of the show. Cool. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, who, anybody have a question that has not asked one yet? I want to make sure everybody gets a chance. Yes. Yeah, blue shirt. Um, so, how did you enjoy the, like, you say, you know, like, the Oh my god, that's right, yeah. Um, also, Issei in High School DXD, if anybody watches. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was that? What was the question? I'm so sorry, I couldn't hear you. Filling the shoes for Scott. Um, it was an interesting situation, the whole thing, of like, because uh, Scott Freeman was Issei for the first two seasons, and then he couldn't do it anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For reasons. Uh, and then, so they asked me if I would take it over, and you know, already that was kind of an uncomfortable situation, but I'm, I'm really... I'm still insanely thankful that the, they didn't ask me to do like an imitation. Like they didn't want me to try to sound like Scott or replace it. They just kind of wanted me to do my own thing uh, and make Issei my own. And so yeah, season three and season four of High School DxD are some of the most fun recording anime that I've had in my entire career because uh, they let me improv. Uh, it's a very collaborative, since it's such a modern show and it's, it's it, the whole point of it is to be comedic. We can be a lot more uh, liberal with, you know, the types of jokes that we use and the, and, and the things that we say and do and everything to really punch it up because that's the whole point. It's just to make you laugh. Um, so, like, we we just I I get to do and say things in that show that I I never thought that I would do in any sort of professional capacity. Uh, and uh, the fact that I get to work with all of these amazing people in this land. And, and that show has had a new director for every season. So it's been really cool to get to see everybody else's take on it. This past season, uh, the voice of Konigo, Jade Saxton, uh, directed the fourth season. And it's freaking great. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to see it yet, please do. Because I, like, I can't say the stuff that I say in the show here. <laughs> so go <laughs> If you want to hear the funny stuff, go look it up. Request an 18 plus panel. I know, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, you have an answer question. Um, I was wondering, what made you want to do voice acting in the first place? For those who couldn't hear, her question was, uh, what made me want to do voice work in the first place? Um, uh, I started imitating everything that I heard on television, <laughs> movies, music, everything from the time I could talk. My first words in this world were DuckTales woohoo. <laughs> and, like, I mean, I grew up in that, I was born in 85, I grew up in that time, a very steady diet of the Disney afternoon, uh, and uh, all the Steven Spielberg cartoons like Animaniacs and, and uh, uh, Freakazoid and, and then uh, Gargoyles, and just, I mean, just a, just a made, like, golden age of animation in our country, especially when it came to Saturday morning cartoons and stuff, and weekday cartoons, it was just, you couldn't have grown up in a better time. And so I was always constantly imitating everything that I heard. Um, and this was starting when I was like two or three. And so by the time I was five, my mother was just like, you know, he does this. And he, 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 he's never lost interest and he does it for everything. I'm going to put him in theater. And so at the age of five, I did my first children's play. I was Gollum in the children's theater production of The Hobbit. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and I was hooked from then on in. From, from that point on, I knew I wanted to be an actor, and I kept doing it as I grew up, but I still kept imitating. I still loved watching cartoons more than anything. I loved animation, and um, uh, by the time I was seven or eight, uh, a very, I, it's a very long story, so I'll just cut to the very end of it. I ended up meeting on a family spring, on a spring, spring break trip. I met the voice of Donald Duck. 
<laughs> oh, just <laughs> randomly. Uh, because my little seven, eight-year-old self was hitting on his daughter, <laughs> uh, and I wanted to impress her with my voices, so I tried to do Donald Duck, and she just gives me this incredulous, like, my dad is Donald Duck, and points at me, and just like, forget you, tell me about you. And, 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 and so, like, immediately it was just kind of like, oh, it, it clicked in me, oh, Donald Duck isn't real, that's an actor. I'm an actor. I want to do that! And, and so, like, from the time I was eight years old, I knew I wanted to be a voice actor. But then, when I was nine, Pokemon hit. Yeah. And, then, it, and, the, and then Digimon, and then all this other stuff. And so, like, I was starting to gradually, you know, like, to get my little my nine-year-old head. I, I was like, this is cartoons for big kids. And so I was just like, through Disney afternoon, it's all about Digimon and, and Pokemon and stuff like that. And then and then we and so like because of that, my little hometown still didn't have uh, cable, and we had just this little mom and pop run videos rental thing. So I went there and they had one anime section on a shelf that was four VHSs. Three of them were Sailor Moon movies, <laughs> and the other one was uh, Kimagure Orange Road. And I saw Kimagure at one point, but it was just like one tape with three episodes, and it was in the middle of the story, so I had no idea what was going on. Uh, but I, I rented all three of those Sailor Moon movies that day, and, I, and at that point I was hooked on Sailor Moon. My uh, my fandom in anime, offic I be officially became an otaku. <laughs> that night, that and like uh, on my little crappy 14.4k dial-up modem, I got on, I got online and over three hours of loading three pages, um, I I found an anime forum and uh, that's when I first started like becoming a part of the online community and talking about Sailor Moon and stuff like that. It was like I mean, the internet was still way young at this point, um, and uh, it just it just kind of went from there, and then eventually in in my first year of high school, uh, I secretly during our HTML class created my own anime forum because I had crappy internet at home, but the school had good internet, so I, I secretly secretly made an anime forum there and, and and made a lot of friends and everything through it, and through that I met someone in Austin who went to school with the voice of Nadia from Nadia Secret of Blue Water, which was created by the creator of Evangelion. Uh, it was a show that he made just before Evangelion, actually, an incredible show. Um, but it was done in Austin by a branch of ADV Films, which was one of the biggest names in anime in the States at that point, aside from, you know, alongside Funimation. They were even bigger than Funimation at that point. Funimation was still just starting out. And uh, they were an hour and a half south of me. And so he gave me the phone number because he got it from the girl who went to, he went to school with. And I, my senior year of high school, I called them and, and said, look, I've been an actor since I was five years old. This is stuff I've done. I've loved animation and voice work. This is the kind of stuff I want to do. Obviously, I wasn't anywhere near as, as uh, calm as I am right now. It was more like, huh, I'm an actor? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in the voices, anime, ha! <laughs> and, and so, like, and, uh, over the course of about six months, I called them once a month just saying, hey, I'm still here, I still want to do this, and in January of 2004, my senior year before I graduated, they gave me my first gig. And I was paid with a DVD, so I felt like a true actor. I had been paid with breadcrumbs. And, 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 um, uh, and that's where it all started. I uh, just did a couple of bit parts in what they call the Scream and Die session, called uh, for in Wedding Peach. It's so kind of a, a uh, poor man's Sailor Moon. And 15 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> Sorry for the long-winded answer, but there you go. Anybody have a question that is not asked one yet? No. Okay, so, yes, sir. You, and you have one as well? All right, cool. Yes, sir. And then we'll go to you. <laughs> I, I have done gaming. Sounds like, like, full-time. Like, full-time voice work? Not really, because, like, I mean, if I suddenly started getting cast in a crap ton of video games, then yeah, I would be pretty much working full-time in video games. But as a voice actor, like, we don't necessarily pick to stay in one thing and, like, full-time. We just take work wherever it comes from. Uh, nobody really tries to just 
say, I only want to do voice act, uh, anime voice acting, or I only want to do prelate work, or I only want to do narration. We do everything. Well, uh, because you can't make a living just doing one type of voice work. If there was one type of voice work that you could make a living at, it would be video games, but most of that is in LA, and I love Texas. <laughs> it's cheaper here. <laughs> uh, and Texas itself is becoming Austin, Dallas, Houston, they are growing into... Texas is becoming the next California. It's, it's, it's Atlanta's doing it too right now. So many people, so many other you know, production companies, everything have started to... All of Walking Dead is entirely filmed out of Louisiana and Atlanta. Um, a ton of horror shows, like movies and stuff are done out of Austin now. Uh, anime and video games and, and stuff are done out of uh, Dallas now, and so like Texas itself is becoming a massive multimedia market. So there's there's really no reason for me to. Uh, and with the onset of you know per, current day technology, I could feasibly, once I finish setting up my home studio to perfect to industry standards, I could be able to record video games commercials and stuff anywhere in the world from my home. Wow. So I and and it's. That is the ultimate goal right now, is just to be able to engineer myself, direct myself, and record myself from home over a Skype session or something with directors, wherever they might be, and just make my living from home in my underwear. <laughs> so that's, that's the ultimate dream right now. That's what I'm working towards. But for now, I, I just I travel everywhere. Uh, I go to LA sometimes to record. I, go, uh, I, I come down to Houston every once in a while. I do still do most of my work out of Dallas, but when I'm not recording, I'm at conventions, and that's part of the job now too. So it's just yeah, it's uh, I I have been fortunate enough since I was thir <coughs> since I was uh, thirteen since two thousand thirteen <laughs> two thousand thirteen <laughs> to only work in it or to work uh, only work as an actor. Uh, I've been that. That's pretty much what my life is now. My last, my last job that wasn't acting was delivering cookies for people as part time. Uh, it was a, it was a part time gig, and um, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I don't have to do any other work that I don't want to. I can just live doing what I do now. It took me 14 years to get there, but it did. It. Sorry for the long-winded answer. Uh, you had a question a second ago. Yes, we'll get to you, and then to you. Yeah, for you vocally, what's the most difficult thing for you to do? Um, lower register. Like if you kind of listen to me. Um, my voice naturally sits kind of higher in my head. It's more, it has kind of a natural nasally pitch to it. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm just allergic to Texas. Um, <laughs> born and raised, but allergic to everything. Um, so a lot of my voice just comes from the fact that I can't breathe half the time. Um, but my voice has always drifted higher, and it's been much easier for me to my voice didn't drop, you know, when I became a teenager ever, it actually went higher. Um, and so I played around with that and developed that to the point where the highest that I can go with would still being able to, like, say stuff is up here. But, like, I, I'd actually recorded as Armin in uh, um, Attack on Titan Junior High, the last episode where he puts on the bunny girl outfit. The entire of the episode he talks like this, would you like a cheeseburger? Attention, everyone! <laughs> Tokoyami range, which I just kind of drop down, I use, I go 100% for my diaphragm, and I just kind of push everything out that way. This is also the voice that I use for Ginoza, Psychopaths. Uh, and so, the one thing that you'll notice, though, is I don't have that bassy presence that you would expect from, like, someone like, say, Chris Sabat. Uh, that is my deep, biggest weakness, is I can't really play or deliver on the sound uh, any sort of character 
that requires bass. Like, so you don't just play really many villains then, right? Do what? You don't play many villains. I play a ton of villains. Oh, so ton of I do. I do play a ton of villains. Um, oh, okay, high pitch villains. Villains don't necessarily need to have that bassiness to them, like Tyrion, for example. Everything that Tyrion does is kind of this almost slimy, almost sneaky kind of, almost, kind of imagine him almost like a Mark Hamill Joker, if you will. <laughs> oh, that's so good, Bats! Let's have a good time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just kind of the, yeah. that's the type of stuff that I can do, and, I, and like, I, I love playing villains because they have no rules. Um, but I don't have to go into that deep, bassy thing in order to, to, you know, to sell that, or to sell an, an, an evil character. Um, so yeah, those are the types of roles that are really... Any, and other than that, really scratchy characters are, are, are kind of like... I played a character once that talked like this, and it was only an hour, and I lost my voice for three days. Wow. Doing it. I, wow. I, I drank... In that hour session, I drank eight of these. Mm -hmm. oh, and I still lost my voice. Like, yeah, it's, it's just, those can be rough. Certain textures of voices and anything that requires bass. If I need to get bass and they absolutely want me to play it, then we have to turn, we have to turn the gain up on the mic and I basically have to swallow the microphone. Like, like or what they call kissing the mic. Um, you just, you get like right up on it. And, and, and when you can do that, um, it can pick up a lot more, and you can be a lot more subtle with it. And so I can sneak bass in that way, but it requires a mic trick. I can't just do it on my own. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sense. All right, cool. And you had a question, and then you had a question. Could you do um, Lithuania's I Got a Shield? Oh, yeah! I can't say the full line here because it's all ages. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Right, um, I got the shield! <laughs> <laughs> or, uh... It's like, oh, uh, uh, of all <laughs> I got the shield! There you go. It's not fun without the full line. The full, it's an outtake from Italia. The full line is, I got a shield. <laughs> so, like, yeah, like, like yippee, think, yippee ki -yay, and finish the sentence, and that's what he said. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, like, it's much, it's much more fun when I can say that. But, yeah, it was a fun outtake. Yes. Um, and then you. I was wondering, what, what do you do while you're waiting in between jobs? Pray? <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I mean, like, uh, th th that's one of the reasons why I say it's so incredible, why, why I'm so insanely proud, uh, like, excited and proud of the fact that I only have to work as an actor or as an anime now. Uh, I mean, from 2013 to the beginning of this year, I lived and breathed anime every single day. I was a voice actor for anime, and my my primary source of income was writing scripts for anime dubs. So I was it was just anime in every in and out every day for about six years. And so uh, the fact that I'm able to still do that, especially even now with conventions and everything, is is really incredible because. Especially with how fast we record things now, uh, I'm 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 the lead in I'm one of the leads in Attack on Titan this season. I'm also the voice of the Grand Minister in Dragon Ball Super, and we're recording the whole Tournament of Power arc, so I've got a lot of work there. I'm also in two other shows, long running uh, for this season. So you would think that being a a pretty decently sized character in at least five shows this season, I would just be recording all the time, right? I record maybe three hours a week. Wow, well, that's not much. And that's that's for all five of those characters, because you never know on a kid. Like there's been several episodes this season where Armin isn't even there, doesn't talk, doesn't say anything, uh, and that can be in there. Same with my heroes. Same with Free. Same with everything. Yeah, I play Mitri in Free. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so like, and I'm doing that season right now where he's the coach. Um, little Mitri with the with the. Gray, hair. gray, purple hair that really loves Reen. Um, yeah, Reen, go Reen. Um, so like, um, and he's the coach now this season for for that group. And, and but it's just I'm a part of these huge ensemble casts, and so even those of us who are leads, Aaron and Mikasa haven't really said Jack this season. So it's like they're maybe in there for thirty minutes to an hour every week, and if that's the only show that they have right now, that's 
nothing to live off of. You play video games? I do. <laughs> so, but so that's the deal. It's like most of the time, but right now, since uh, I actually I, I I'm no longer writing. Uh, I, I I stopped uh, writing scripts because it was. It was just too much. It was too much to try and do uh, while also doing conventions and trying to be a, an actor, first and foremost. I didn't get into this to be a writer. I wanted to be an actor. So I had to let something go. Um, so now it's just, and it's really scary, though, because if I don't have a convention to go to, and if I'm not recording, I'm screwed. I got no work. I got nothing. The, the hard thing about being a voice actor or just an actor in general uh, is that when you're casting something, the moment that's done, you're unemployed. So there have been times where I was employed at the beginning of the month, and then at the end of the month we finish the show, and then I get no work for three months. So I have to find something else. I either have to, I mean, 90% of the work is finding more work. That's why we have, you know, we have agents, we have other stuff like that, people that can go and do a lot of that legwork for us, but we still have to do it ourselves. So, I mean, there's plenty of times where you're either twiddling your thumbs, waiting for something because it's completely out of your control and there's nothing to audition for, uh, or uh, you just have to find something else, whether it be uh, an audio book that will pay absolute garbage rates, but it's work while you have nothing else to go on, so that will be like, you literally just, the, 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 the term starving artist exists for a reason. <laughs> And that is, that's very much the, the actor's existence. Um, it, it's, there are some of us who have been very fortunate, like myself now and Vic Mignogna, Trina, uh, Bryce, a lot of, uh, most of us that are here this weekend, this is kind of our only job now, but we got lucky and, and we've been doing this for almost 20 years each now. So like, I'm assuming I've answered the question at this point. I apologize for, again, yeah. the long-winded answer. But, like, yeah, it's, it's just, that's pretty much the, the state of it. It's, uh, it's a great time to be an anime fan. I love the fact, as a fan now, that we get our dubs out so fast. But as someone who helps make those dubs, when I'm cast, it's great. I do have work every week, but that work that I do does not pay my bills. It, it does not help me keep a roof over my wife and our puppy's head. So I, we have to find other stuff. So uh, and yes, you have the question, and we'll get to you. Does anybody on this side have a question? If I'm not seeing any hands go up, I'm so sorry. You had a question. I have all the questions. All right, I'm so sorry, dude. Oh, like, you know what? Let me let me ask this yeah. question. Right, question right, you haven't really had a chance to ask anything. Points. So like one, what's your personal opinion on like the online redubbing stuff like Team Four Star? I don't mind Team Four Star. I actually really good friends with a lot of Team Four Star guys. Uh, Scott Ferrex is a, a really close friend of mine. I love the dude. I love what they do. As a fan, when I was a kid, I would have loved to have done something like that. I remember when the first Yu-Gi-Oh! or Bridge stuff was coming out before I was even, <laughs> before I was even a professional voice actor. I was watching some of Bridge series. Like I get it. It's fun, and it's a fun thing that you can do as a fan. You know. Um, the, the legal issues of the whole like using pre-existing property and everything like that is a gray area, so I would never do it personally if someone asked me to. I can't. Um, but I, I don't have a problem with it. And what was the other question? Uh, second one, uh, you mentioned like, you know, being between work kind of sucks. Yeah. But one thing that Chris mentioned when he was at RealmsCon a couple of years back was that mm -hmm. he was going to start actually manufacturing and posting online to sell voice packs for games. Huh. Because he says... Chris, who? Uh, well, he says he used to do them, like, for, for giggles when he was a kid for stuff like Warcraft 2 and, uh -huh. and uh -huh. Starcraft. Chris, who? who, who was uh, the, the voice actor for Goku. And... Oh, Sean Schemmel. Oh, Sean, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sean Schemmel. Yeah, that makes sense. But, uh, Sean doesn't have to worry. <laughs> He's <a> Goku. <laughs> <laughs> he will but, be doing this forever. But uh, have you ever thought about like, you know, doing something like that, like manufacturing voice packs? Uh, I'm actually in the process now, since I'm not writing for dub scripts anymore, uh, of creating my own content. Yeah, of, because, uh, of creating my own characters to voice and stories to put out that I can write, that I can voice, that I can get my friends to voice with me and everything. So, I mean, like, I can get Funimation voice actors and stuff to come and do stuff with me. So, like, it's, I, I think that's going to be my next move is not only just focusing, continue to focus on doing conventions and, and, and continue to grow my voice career as it has, like, 
keep doing video games, keep doing anime, but I want to create my own stuff too. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of tired of my only creative outlet being other people's creative And it's from, it starts from, where do I begin? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm here specifically for these three days for y'all. You, uh, Bryce, and Trina. Cool, man. Thank Thank you. man. You're welcome. Yeah, man. Uh, we're going to try welcome. to get a, an Attack on Titan panel added. Oh, uh, so, nice. hopefully. Yeah. That's exactly Yeah, that's hopefully, because there wasn't one listed, and we have the three leads together for the first I, time at any wow, convention so in, in, in a while. Like, the last time all three of us were together at a con was probably three years. So, like, it's it's kind of nuts. Uh, yeah, we would love to try to do an Attack on Titan panel. We'll also be doing a My Hero panel tomorrow. Yeah. Um, uh, that's at like 8 p.m. I think in this room, uh, which like hopefully it holds everyone. Um, but yeah, any questions? We've only got like five minutes left, unfortunately. Oh, oh wait, uh, but oh, like, what was your favorite Attack on Titan from season one, season two? Because you mentioned the season one uh -huh. where, where he's getting beat up, uh -huh. and then Aaron comes to his rescue with uh -huh. Mikasa. Yeah, Mikasa comes to his rescue, and they didn't care about Aaron. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that moment too. I love that even Armin's like, well, one of you scared him. <laughs> um, um, but uh, my favorite line or my favorite type. Oh man, your favorite scene, your favorite, your favorite My favorite time. scene from yeah. season one is is actually the thing that made me fall in. This would be the last question for this, and I'm so sorry because we only have like four minutes left. But my favorite scene in Attack on Titan season one is the one that made me want to play Armin. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's just before he does the speech, uh -huh. uh, when Aaron and Mikasa tell him, "Look, dude, we trust you. Like with our lives, you always keep your head. You always make good decisions. You always keep." Like, you, you just have this strategic brain, and we trust you. If you say that we should do this, we will do it. And up until that point, Armin had been his own worst enemy. It's, he, he had this in, in his mind that he was a burden, that he was weak, that he was useless, that he was only there and alive because of Aaron and Mikasa protecting him, and they saw him as this burden that they had to protect and everything. And it's like, just constantly pushing himself because he saw himself as useless. And in that moment, they tell him, what the heck are you talking about, man? Like, they, to him, they just completely shattered all of those things, and he realizes, oh, nobody actually thinks this about me. I think this about me. I can change this. And, and, and from that moment, and there's this beautiful symmetry with the video and his thoughts, as, all of the, as this horrible self-image is crumbling away from Armin, the Titan corpse is crumbling away behind him. It was this beautiful visual symmetry. And then from that point on, he's good to go. Like, he steps up from that moment, does his speech, saves their butts. He starts to create, he creates the, the plan that gets, uh, that plugs up the hole in Trost. Like, because of Armin, they get Trost back. Because, and then he, he starts to, um, he just does more and more courageous and crazy things from that moment on. Just because of the fact that he realized, oh, I've been my own worst enemy. I don't have to do that anymore. And it was such an incredible moment because I've been there. I've been in that place as an artist and as a person being like, I'm just a burden. I'm not you know, worth anything. I'm a horrible friend to my friends. Like, I'm just, I, they must just be nice to even be around me, stuff like that. So to, to see Armin have those same feelings and mindset and to see him in, in one moment be free of all of that emotional baggage was so, like, I cried. Like, it was just like, I can't, I can only imagine what that must feel like. I would love to get a chance to play him cool. and actually put myself in that role and, and see if I can feel it. <laughs> and then Funimation got the rights to it, we auditioned, I got the role, which never happens. <laughs> never! And then it ended up on Toonami and it changed my life forever. It wow. changed my career. Okay. So, like, yeah, it was just... Sitting at home watching anime just just for fun, watching Attack on Titan. Nobody had it yet, and they end up getting to be the role that I wanted to. Wow. Like it was just yeah, it was it was it was so crazy. But guys, I'm so sorry I couldn't get to everybody's questions. Thank you so much for those of you who came and asked. I hope you learned something. We're entertained. I will be. Uh, I'm going straight to my table in the dealer's room for autographs for the rest of the day. So if you were interested in that, I'll be there till six. Yeah. Have a great time. Yes. What character do you like to? Uh, fun wise, Issei, just because I get to. I get to improv and say some of the most ridiculous things ever.